The Indiana Hoosiers have brought in tons of talent through the transfer portal, a high-level high school recruit, and returning superstars as well. But a problem they had was three-point shooting. So I asked the question, who will be the Hoosiers' best three-point shooter next season? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in. It is the Locked On Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goins. I appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. Part of your rotation as we are, of course, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which is your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. Terms apply in the Game Time app. Well, it's no secret that the Indiana Hoosiers were one of the worst three-point shooting teams in all of college basketball from a year ago. And so that was one of the focal points in the transfer portal. You bring in multiple players who are good guards, you bring in three-point shooters, and you return who is probably your best three-point shooter from a year ago. So I ask the question, who will be the Hoosiers' best three-point shooter next season, and how will that make the Indiana Hoosiers better? That's what we're talking about on the show today. Plus, it is official that the Indiana Hoosiers will be in the battle for Atlantis with some new-looking teams. There were some teams that pulled out and new teams that got added in. We'll talk about that today. And are there any more portal updates that we need to talk about? All of that is on the show today. Well, the Indiana Hoosiers, as I mentioned, were uh, statistically one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the country. Now, to combat that, we were one of the best paint teams in the country. Um, we uh, Our shooting percentage was good. Our percentage of shots in there was a lot. And we made a lot of shots inside the paint. Thank you, Khalil Ware and Malik Renu. But that's pretty much all we had going for us. Free throw shooting was okay. It was spotty. It was hit or miss. Um, but shooting from behind the arc was basically non-existent. And the problem was every team knew it. Everybody that we played absolutely knew, all right, this team sucks at shooting threes. And that's just flat out the truth. We don't have to really worry about it. There was one guy that you had to worry about when it came to shooting threes. And that's a guy named McKenzie Mbako, who has returned to the team this year. So the Indiana Hoosiers and Mike Woodson said, all right, we got to go find some guys. We got to go find players that can be shooters. And there was a quote floating around that said, we don't need three-point shooters. We need three-point makers. And I 100% agree. I think that is 100% accurate because believe me you can go out there and find guys that'll take three pointers no, without a question they will absolutely take some threes if you allow them and give them a green light you need some dudes that are going to knock them down and be actual uh i guess impact players and be threats from the outside so the hoosiers went and they did that they went and got two guards that not only could fill those guard spots that we had to fill but have three point shooting it's success is the way I'm going to put that with a little asterisk by it because while they do have experience shooting threes, they may not be the best three-point shooters that we've seen, but I think there's a chance for them to get better in Miles Rice and Cannon Carlisle. You also go and you get a guy like Luke Goody, who is a good three-point shooter, has a chance to be a really good three-point shooter, and is a little bit streaky at times, which to be a shooter, you know what? That's fine. All you got to do is get hot and we'll feed you the rock. You also, the newest transfer addition in Hatton from Bellarmine, he has the potential to shoot threes as a big man as well. So all of those things considered, plus you still have Trey Galloway, who we were expecting to be better a year ago, three-point shooting. It just wasn't there for him. It was pretty atrocious to see, actually. You do have Bryson Tucker, and you have Ja'Kai Howard, and you have these guys who are going to really step up for you this season. And so, who's going to be the best one? Who's going to be the best three-point shooter on this team? And I think you can make an argument for numerous players. I think you could say it's Miles Rice, who, while he was at, uh, at Washington State, he only shot 27.5%. So, it wasn't 
overly impressive. He's got some work to do on that, right? But I think he's going to be better. I think Indiana's offense is going to fit him a lot better from behind the three-point arc. You could say that it's going to be Cannon Carlisle, who shot 32% a year ago when he was at Stanford. Or you could go with my answer, a guy that shot 33% from three a year ago and was getting better as the year went on. And by the end of the season, this guy was playing his best basketball. Yeah, you guessed it by this point. I'm going with McKenzie Mbaco. He will be the best three-point shooter on the Indiana Hoosiers next season. I just think that's the truth. I think he's got the best-looking shot. I think he's going to develop a game where he can create his own shot, shoot off the dribble, and if he's open, just straight shoot off the pass, catch it at the chest, and throw it up and knock it down. Because he was our most consistent shooter a year ago. Why not make it two years in a row? And I hope he takes that sophomore jump, that sophomore leap. And I think he will. I really do think he will. And man, if you're a big guy like him that can rise up and shoot over everybody because of his eye arcing shot, it's so pretty to watch. And he was a little bit of a streaky shooter too, but it was getting more consistent as the game or as the season went on. That's going to benefit him. Imagine if he starts the year how he ended the year talking about McKenzie and Baco, and he just gets better. And he just gets better. He will be the best three-point shooter that we have. Will he be the go-to guy? I don't know. I guess we're going to have to find out. That may be a stupid question because, well, Jacob, if he's the best shooter, why not, Why wouldn't he be the go-to guy? I don't know. Maybe there are bigger defenders that lock him down or extend out to the three-point line, which I also think helps out Indiana because they have to respect him when he steps outside the arc because he'll let it fly. And he proved last year he'll can, he can knock it down too. And that's going to open up so much for this offense for Ballo and Renew inside the lane. So will it be Miles Rice or Cannon Carlisle? It absolutely could. Could it be Luke Goody off the bench? Sure, why not? It could be Trey Galloway, who I saw somebody in the YouTube comments yesterday say all the pressure and the weight is lifted off his shoulders. He should just go out there and let it fly and have a good time. And you know what? Maybe so. Maybe that's the truth. Maybe that's what happens with Trey Galloway. Who knows? But I'm going with the guy that's proven it. I'm going with the guy that I could see a spark at the end of last year, and I truly believe that McKenzie Mbaco will have the best three-point percentage because he'll have a lot of takes and he's going to have a lot of makes. I think he'll be Indiana's best three-point shooter out of anybody on the roster next season. Well, coming up on Locked on Hoosiers, are there more portal updates that we need to talk about with Indiana basketball? It seems like they're done, but are they? That's what we'll talk about coming up next on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by Game Time. Look, Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Some of my favorite parts of the Game Time app. All in pricing. So toggling this feature, it's going to show you the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. What you see is what you pay. I hate having to go through. It's like, okay, here's the price. Here's the next price. Okay, here's the final price. Nope. You toggle that on game time. It's going to show you what you pay upfront every single time. And their lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So there's literally no reason to not be using the game time app. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
Welcome back into Lockdown Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. Shout out to all of my everydayers, those of you that come back each and every day. Thank you very much. You're the reason that we do this, and you're the reason that it's successful. We passed 2,500 subscribers, way on our way to 2,600 subscribers, and then 3,000 on YouTube. So to all of my YouTube listeners, watchers, viewers, however you want to call it, be sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so, comment down below your thoughts about today's conversations. To all of my audio listeners too, thank you very much. I appreciate you listening each and every day on your way to work or whatever the case may be. Follow us on there, turn on notifications so you never miss a new episode of Locked on Hoosiers. Well, the Hoosiers have killed the portal. I mean, just crushed it, dominated, whatever awesome adjective that you want to throw in there, the Hoosiers have done it this offseason. They had a problem, they had multiple problems, and they said, okay, here's what we're going to do to fix it. And Mike Woodson and this staff hit the portal and hit it hard and have caused so many waves across college basketball because they've gone and gotten some of the best players in the portal. Here's the list of what Indiana's done, all right? Umar Ballo, the center from Arizona. Cannon Carlisle, the guard from Stanford. Luke Goody, the forward from Illinois. Miles Rice, the point guard from Washington State. And the latest, Langdon Hatton from the center power forward from Bellarmine. And that's a fantastic haul, man. That's a really, really good portal class. Yes, it's a lot. It's really big, bigger than most portal classes, I would say, across college basketball. Most teams aren't trying to go and get, what, six players? Is that right? Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, six players. Wait, no, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> That's five players. My math is not mathing right now. Five players from the transfer portal. But even then, that's still a lot of additions to a new team. And three of those are those one-year rentals that I talk about where they're just coming in to play the one year and then they're gone the next most teams want to say, all right, we're bringing back this many guys. We're bringing in this many guys from high school. We need to go get three, maybe four. But the Hoosiers had to go get five. And you know what? I'm okay with that. And the players that they got all fit the system really, really well. And they all just make sense. They all make sense for this team, this roster, this, uh, I guess, this mold and how this team is going to flow in the system. That's what makes sense is every single one of these is good. And there has not been a single one where we've been left kind of scratching our head. It's like, wait, why did you go get Luke Goody? Like what? You didn't need him. Wrong. You did need him. And you needed every single player that the Hoosiers got. And that's what makes this exciting. But the question is, are we done? Are there more players that the Hoosiers are going after? I don't think so. I think the Hoosiers, I think we're done. Like, I think we're good. And we do have that one last roster spot remaining um, if we wanted to use it. And I said this the other day, and I'll continue to say it. If something crazy happens and the Hoosiers just have an awakening and Mike Woodson wakes up one morning from a sleep and says, we got to go get this guy, then okay, maybe. But I don't think they're going to be actively recruiting anybody else for right now. and. You can make the argument, and, and you can on your own, whether you think we should or not, but, man, I'm happy with what we got. But I was looking through the list today at the players that were on the list at one point, right, that Indiana had either reached out to or was interested in or kind of popped up on any of those portal trackers, right? Man, there's some serious names on here that I even forgot about. I mean, portal season was unbelievable. How about Aaron Bradshaw from Kentucky or um, Asijian from Wisconsin, the guard uh, from, from the uh, the Chiefs State, Alex Hemingway from Clemson, Connor Hickman from Bradley, and Tony Perkins from Iowa, and Adu Thierro from Kentucky, and Amari Williams from Drexel who went to Kentucky, Leland Walker from Eastern Kentucky. Like, man, there's some serious names on here. And the one that I've God, I learned his name, and he didn't end up coming here. Unbelievable. Nikita Konstantinovsky from Monmouth, who ended up committing to Notre Dame. That was one of the late pushes for Indiana to get that backup big, who, uh, again, ended up going to the Fighting Irish. So lots of big names in there. And you know what? There were some that were disappointing. Sure, there's some that were very disappointing that the Hoosiers didn't get. But I'm cool with what we got. I'm not going to say I wouldn't trade anybody. 
Now, the three starters we got, no, I'm good. I think we got exactly what we're looking for from Ballo, Rice, and Carlisle. Goody, I love him, and I think he's going to be really good. Hatton, I like him. He's fine. I got nothing against the guy. Would I trade him? Eh, maybe, but maybe he'll prove me wrong. And that's the thing. We just don't really know what his role is going to be just yet. It's going to be a bench role, a backup role, sure, but what's he going to do and produce for this Indiana team? We have to wait and find out. But there's so many names on there that we went after that would have made this team better, and we got ones that do make us better 100%. That's what excites me, and I think that's what should excite you as well. You got shooters. You got depth. You got a new starting center who stands at seven freaking foot tall. Like, he's huge, man. You replace an NBA seven-footer with another seven-footer that has potential to go to the NBA. And you go and got two starting guards. Two positions you desperately needed. With the leaving of Xavier Johnson and the massive question mark that you had at the point guard spot, and then you went and got a shooting guard who could start over Trey Galloway. And nothing against Galloway, but his time has come and gone. He'll be a nice role player. He'll be a fun player. He'll be a fan favorite off the bench. But you had to go get somebody that was younger, fresher, and let's just be honest, more effective for this team offensively and defensively. And that's why you went and got Cannon Carlisle. So in terms of what the Hoosiers could do now in the transfer portal in basketball, I think we're done. And I think that's okay. That's a fine thing to say. Because we got who we wanted. We got who we wanted, and we got what we wanted. I, I have not seen one person that's upset with our recruiting class in terms of the transfer portal. And if you are, by all means, let's have a discussion about it. But how could you how could you be upset? Like, this is a great class. Depending on where you look, it's the number one ranked class in the country. Top five consensus. I don't care what website you look on. You could be on Purdue's athletic website and they're still going to tell you that it's a top five transfer portal class. But as I've been saying, it's all got to come together. It all has to gel. It all has to mold. And that may take a little bit. That may take some time. But in our next segment, talking about the battle for Atlantis, that's a perfect time for that to happen. The non-conference schedule is a perfect time for the transfer portal players, for the returners, and for Bryce and Tucker to all come together and figure this thing out. That's what we're talking about next in the battle for Atlantis, a big-time tournament that the Hoosiers will be a part of coming up this next basketball season. We'll discuss that next on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Look, I've been all about the NBA and NHL playoffs. This at, From basically the middle of April to the middle of June, it's some of my favorite times of the year because you've got all the basketball games going on, hockey games going on every single night, Sunday to Sunday, Every single day, there's something happening, and you can turn up the fun a little bit if you're having FanDuel open on your phone while you watch those games as well. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Final segment here on Lockdown Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here and, again, being an everyday or those of you that are here each and every day, Monday through Friday. Thank you very much for being one of those. Well, the Hoosiers, while we are still waiting on basketball season to get here and still waiting on the official schedule to be released, one thing that we know is that Indiana will be in the battle for Atlantis. This is a massive non-conference tournament in that month of November, right there during Feast Week when all those big games are going on. I've told you it's one of my favorite weeks of the entire year, not just of the basketball season, but of the year. To heck with Christmas Day football games or whatever. Give me Feast Week of college basketball. Bowl season? Psh, give me Feast Week in college basketball, man. I, I just live off of it. Thanksgiving's right there, my favorite holiday, and then Feast Week for college basketball. Here are the teams, the eight teams that are going to be in the battle for Atlantis. Arizona, 
Davidson, Gonzaga, of course, Indiana, Louisville, Oklahoma, Providence, the newcomer, and West Virginia. And I say newcomer because that was Creighton. Creighton was in this tournament. Uh, they backed out. I believe they're going to play in a different tournament. I'll get to that in a second. And then, yeah, West Virginia. Um, yeah, so they backed out and they got replaced by Providence. This will be taking place November 27th through the 29th of this year in 2024 down in the Bahamas. Each team will play three games through the, the matchups. You don't know where we are in the tournament, and it's, of course, just a tournament, but you get guaranteed three games regardless. So you could go 3-0, and 2-1, and 1-2, and 0-3. Oh but what a perfect opportunity for this Indiana team with all these new guys and all these new faces that are trying to figure it out. You get to go play high-level competition. Then you're playing Final Four teams. You're playing champions of their conferences you're playing ncaa tournament caliber programs right out of the gate arizona gonzaga louisville hopefully they get better providence west virginia oklahoma now in the sec like you've got all sorts of good games there and teams that you're not going to see the rest of the year you'll play these teams one time until you get to the ncaa tournament and if it just locks up to where you'd play them again but the fun thing about that is it's really just a, a toss-up game. And you could say that about Davidson too. Like it's a coin flip because it's so early in the year. We have no idea what these teams are, including Indiana, including us. We don't know what we're going to be on November 27th, but you can work on things. You can implement things. You can try new things because look, as great as these games are and as cool as it would be to have a win over Arizona on the schedule and on the resume, it doesn't really matter. What matters is conference play. And yes, the tournament committee looks at games like this and wins like this. I think it's blasphemy. I think it's ridiculous because the team that you are in November is nowhere near the team you are in March, good or bad. And so they put way too much stock in these games, in these November non-conference games in terms of a team making or missing the NCAA tournament. Again, I think it's stupid. I think it's ridiculous, but that's a conversation for a different time. In terms of us, for the Hoosiers, go play these teams and play a little loose. Have a little fun. If you're lucky enough to be a fan and go to the Bahamas, poor you. I hate you got to go to the Bahamas over Thanksgiving to watch Indiana basketball. That must be terrible, right? Go down there and have some fun. And go in there and try to win and compete, but don't hold your head down if you don't win all the games. And for Mike Woodson and the staff, you get to try out different starting lineups, different rotations, different minute sets, different plays, different sets. You get to do all of those things in a tournament like this where you are going to be broadcasted on national television. It's going to be on all the different ESPN channels. And you get a chance to display your program on national TV. And let's be honest, I think we could use a little bit of reputation rebuilding, could we not? I think we could kind of lift what people think about Indiana basketball and going on the national stage and having some fun is a great way to do that early on in the season. I think it's a big opportunity. It's a wonderful opportunity for the players, for the coaches, basketball and not basketball, team bonding, all those things that you have to do off the floor as well for things to work out on the floor. That's what this opportunity becomes. For you, the fan, again, if you have a chance and you can afford it, go, man. That's a wonderful, a wonderful chance to, uh, to get away, go and see the Bahamas and also get to watch some really good basketball that week there in the battle for Atlantis. And look, that could be a, a, a tournament where we look back in February and we're like, man, remember when it all just clicked for this team? Remember when everything just came together in that battle for Atlantis and the semifinals taken on, I don't know, Louisville or whatever the case may be, and everything just started working and from then on out you just started playing really good basketball and you figured out who was where and who needed to be where and and what certain guys could do for you like you could hear us having that conversation in february could you not be like man that battle for atlantis was really good for this team good or bad i mean shoot if you go down there and get swept oh three you're at least going to learn something about yourself that's why these are good. That's why these sort of tournaments are necessary for college basketball teams. You can only get better by doing it. Even if you're Davidson, who, yeah, you're probably going to go 0 for 3, but you're going to get better 
because of it. I think this team needs it. I think this roster will need it. And I think it's only going to benefit the Hoosiers when they compete in the battle for Atlantis. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers. Again, I appreciate you being here and really making this your first listen each and every day. We are into talking season, into the summer as things are slowing down news-wise. It's more fun conversations with you like we had today. So let me know in the comments on YouTube what you want to hear, what you want to see. I want you to be as engaged as possible, and I try to be engaging with you as well. If you're on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to our channel, comment down below. If you're on audio, make sure you follow us there. Turn on notifications so you never miss a new episode. Have a great weekend. We'll be back on Monday. Until then, Hoosier fans, stay safe, and I'll talk to you later.